Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Buffalo Chicken Dutch Babies. That's right, we're going to combine everybody's favorite baked pancake with buffalo chicken to create what we hope is a new party snack classic. And not only are these incredibly delicious and very affordable, they are as easy and almost as much fun as making real babies, maybe even more. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by cooking some buffalo chicken. And for that, we will melt a generous amount of butter over medium high heat. And then once hot, we'll place in three boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which I like to do with the smoother side down and that rougher spot that was attached to the bone facing up, since I think there's slightly less chance it sticks and tears when you try to turn it, especially if you're using a non, non-stick pan like I am. And what we'll do is brown these for about three or four minutes or so, at which point we'll flip those over and do the same thing to the other side. And not only is browning this chicken going to give it more flavor, but we are going to be cubing this up, and chicken is way easier and way safer to cut once it's cooked. And that's it. After both sides have browned for about three or four minutes, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat and remove that from the pan. And if you get a few small pieces sticking here and there, don't worry, since everything's going back into this pan anyway. So a few remnants caramelized to the bottom is actually a good thing. And then what we'll do is let that rest on a plate until it's cool enough to handle. And by handle, I mean we'll cut it up in like half inch pieces, which is really easy if you first cut it in half inch strips and then turn the strips and cut across every half inch. And I know you're not here for a geometry lesson, but that should theoretically give you nice uniform cubes. Having said that, this recipe does not need nice uniform cubes. So feel free to chop this up any which way you want. But we do want to avoid chunks that are like way bigger than the other ones, just because that'll be a little bit weird texturally later. But the point is we're going to cut that up and then we'll transfer it back onto the plate. Oh, and please note those beautiful accumulated juices. That's why I placed the chicken down on the board and didn't just dump it off the plate because we would have lost all that flavorful liquid, which would have been a shame. And then what we'll do is transfer this all back into the pan and we'll season it up with some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a few shakes of cayenne, which are completely redundant since the next thing we'll add is a whole bunch of cayenne sauce, also known in the business as Louisiana hot sauce. And yes, since I'm from Western New York, I will be using Frank's hot sauce, which is your classic choice for buffalo style wings. And then what we'll do is give this a stir and we'll turn our heat up to medium high and we will bring this up to a simmer. And then once our chicken chunks are bubbling in that sauce, we'll reduce our heat to medium and we will cook this stirring occasionally for about 10 or 15 minutes during which time all that goodness from the bottom of the pan is going to be dissolved, which is going to add a ton of flavor to our mixture. And even though the chicken's fully cooked, we do want to let this simmer for a little bit to not only reduce and thicken the sauce a touch, but also to really infuse that hot sauce and butter flavor into the meat. But don't worry, the chicken's not going to dry out because we're using thigh meat, which is my way of telling you not to use the breast. Okay, you can, but you'll have to reduce the sauce and butter first and then just stir the breast meat in for a few minutes. So there is a way to do that, but there is a better way, which is this way. But anyway, I simmered this on medium for about 10 minutes or so, at which point we'll transfer that to a bowl to cool. And even if you don't use this to stuff Dutch babies, it's still a great technique for making buffalo style chicken that you could then use in tacos or sliders or lettuce cups or nachos or whatever else they're doing at your favorite gastro pub. And that's it. We will simply let our chicken cool while we move on to our Dutch baby batter which will start with two large whole eggs. And look at those gorgeous deep orange yolks, which I always think means the chicken was happy, or at least well-fed. But in any event, we'll also add some salt, as well as our all-purpose flour, which we'll add all at once. Take that, Marco Pierre White, and then we'll finish up with our whole milk. And believe it or not, that's it. We will simply give this a whisk for a few minutes until we have a beautiful, smooth, relatively thin batter. Oh, and the reason you just heard me mention Marco Pierre White is because he, and chefs like him, insist you should whisk in the flour a little bit at a time so that you don't get lumps. But what they don't realize is if you just dump it all in at once and mix, you don't get any lumps anyway. Right, maybe a few tiny ones here and there, but none that will be a problem. And then what we'll do once we have that mixed up nice and smooth is let it rest on the counter for about 15 or 20 minutes, which will give us time to grease our muffin tin which I'm gonna do with some room temperature butter. And we do want a very generous coating. And yes, brushing melted butter is faster, 
But for whatever reason, I think you're going to have less problems with sticking if you use soft butter like this instead. But to hedge our bets, once these are buttered, I do like to hit them with some nonstick vegetable oil spray, which is optional and possibly unnecessary. But if you have some, I would probably give it a spray. And that's it. We'll go ahead and wipe off the spots where we're going to touch it. At which point it's ready to fill up with our rested batter. And we'll want to fill these about halfway up. And yes, I do like to transfer the batter into a pourable measuring cup, just to make things a little faster and neater. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are for all the pediatrician of this Dutch Baby Batter Edition. But for me, it's definitely a lot easier this way. Oh, and one other tip. I usually start by filling these a little less than halfway up. And then once they're all filled, I'll go back and give each one a few more drops. And that way it gets distributed evenly, and you don't end up getting to the last one, not having enough batter. And then what we'll do once that's set is go ahead and spoon in our buffalo chicken. And for each one of these, I'm probably doing like four or five of those cubes. And if you use three thighs like I did, you're probably going to have a little bit of extra chicken left over, which I did and ate on a piece of toast. But if you only have a little bit left, you could probably squeeze a few extra chunks in. All right, buffalo chicken Dutch babies are not an exact science. So a little more or a little less filling would be fine. And then once we've chickened our batter, We'll go ahead and take our favorite blue cheese and we will crumble about a teaspoon over the top since I and many other people associate the flavor of blue cheese with buffalo chicken. And in these, I think it works incredibly well. But it is technically optional and you could, if you want, use another kind of cheese or no cheese at all. And then you can just serve these with some blue cheese dressing. So as usual, we have options. And that's it. Once we're pleased with how these are cheesed, they're ready to transfer into the center of a cold oven. That's right, the oven's off and cold and definitely not hot. And yes, I do like to put a pan in the bottom in case there's drips. And we will set our heat to 450, at which point we will walk away and let these bake for about 30 minutes or until they're beautifully browned and look like this. And yes, at this point, they do look more like buffalo chicken muffins than Dutch babies. But what's gonna happen is these cool. That center's gonna collapse and that opening in the center is going to get much larger. And slowly but surely, in a few minutes, they will look like little miniature Dutch babies. And that happens so gradually. Let me show you that again with a time lapse. Oh yeah, check it out. And then what we'll do is let these cool in the pan for about five minutes. At which point we can lift those out of the pan with a fork. And as you can see, they've been beautifully browned underneath. And we will transfer those onto a baking rack to cool a little more before we serve them. And yes, of course you can serve these piping hot if you want. But for me, these are most enjoyable and most flavorful when served just warm or at room temp. But anyway, suit yourself. And then as far as the garnish goes, since I got buffalo chicken and blue cheese, I'm going to do a little bit of celery in the form of a stick so that the people that don't like celery don't have to eat it. But another option would be to dice the celery and just throw it right into the center, which I've done and it works beautifully. But that way your guests have no other choice but to eat it. So again, you're going to have to make the call. And that's it. Once celery, we can transfer those to a nice serving platter. And our buffalo chicken Dutch babies are ready to enjoy. And that, my friends, if you're a fan of buffalo chicken wings, is something you're going to like very, very much. And if you also happen to be a fan of the savory Dutch baby, well then, these might become your favorite new party food. And because of how the Dutch baby bakes, where it puffs up and rises on the sides but collapses in the center, I think it is the perfect delivery system for something like this buffalo chicken. And as I mentioned earlier, instead of baking these with the blue cheese, we could just serve these with some blue cheese dressing, either on the side or spooned in. And of course, you should definitely consider this a technique and not necessarily a recipe, since that mini Dutch baby delivery system would work with so many different options for meat and cheese. And no, nobody craves celery, or at least they shouldn't. But it's more than just a decoration here, since it acts as a nice palate cleanser. So if you're on the fence, I would include it. But whether you personalize these or make them as is, or you make them to enjoy on some random weeknight, or to impress your guests at your big Super Bowl party, no matter the ingredients or the occasion, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.